Okay, this is part two of um, Frank Jude Jr. beating, right? Um, one thing about Milwaukee, we will put up, don't forget this, we will put up a fight. And I mean a good one. Because we got no choice. And when stuff like this happened in front of your face, just like any other black community, that's got balls and know you might lose some. You don't know how, but you're going to fight. And that's what you saw that happened over um, in Ferguson. At some point, you like, okay, look, they're killing us anyway. Okay, but we're going to fight for this one right here. And this is what happened, okay? Following a secret John Doe proceeding on February 28, 2005 now, the district attorney E. Michael McCann filed charges against Daniel Mazzaret, uh, Andrew Sprangler, and John Bartlett. Bartlett and Mazzaret both face charges of second degree reckless endangering safety and substantial battery. They should have been charged with attempted murder. Spangler was charged only with substantial battery. Mazzaret was faced an additional charge of perjury for testifying during the John Doe hearing that he never had any contact with Frank Jude. See, they just lie. And you want to know why people don't trust the police? Not where we come from. That's, I mean, I get it. You you don't know. That's why we don't talk to their asses. Unless you have to have them. I mean, and that's crazy. Because there are good officers out here. And I want to make sure I reiterate that. Okay? Because I know officers personally. But when you know that that white culture is going on and you already know that the systemically the black officers uh, or the ones or the white officers that 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 mean well can't do shit about it because systemic all this comes from it's all tied into slave catching that whole mentality that's that's where your policing comes out of how do you think that you can stop something that's been operating like that for all these hundreds of years you can't unless you burn it down, start a, a, a different, start over again, redesign your police departments, your police culture. Because this shit right here, y'all, y'all don't understand. It took all those months for them to even tell, tell that they had done that to them, to uh, Frank Jude. But we was coming because once we heard it, and actually saw Frank Jew's face, and he looked like Emmett Till on the front page of the Sunday Journal. Everybody was up in arms in Milwaukee, black and white, and it didn't matter. It it was all all so bad. So then, um, he was okay again. Um, um, dude was charged with Mazarik was charged with perjury. This perjury charge was handled separately from all the others and eventually dropped. On March 27, 2006, a joint jury trial commenced before David Judge Hanster that was covered by Court TV. So y'all get a chance to see that if y'all want to pull that up. The prosecutors took the unusual step of challenging the racial composition of the jury when an all right jury was selected. The court rejected the prosecutor's challenge and permitted the case to proceed with an all-white jury, laying the groundwork for much community outrage. Now you know we hot now. It was it was hard for us not to even have uh, heart attacks back then and have our heads explode because we already knew what time it was. And, and at that time, Frank uh, Ahmad Aubrey has since shown me that a group of white people can do the right thing. Okay? But that's very rare. Very rare. That's why I always commend those people. You know? Because it's really hard for white people to do that. Because they'll be deemed nigger lovers and all the other kinds of stuff. And they usually just go along to get along. But not this day. I mean, this day, uh -uh. these white people was on point. 
The prosecutor's task was made particularly difficult by the fact that nearly all of the eyewitnesses to the crime admitted drinking that evening, some heavily, so they don't, of course they don't remember. Further, it was later revealed that one of the state's key witnesses, Joseph Shabel, the first on duty of the first one on duty to arrive at the scene, lied in his testimony. Also, the state presented with credibility problems with respect to his two victims. Frank Jude had previously been convicted of felonies of selling marijuana and bribing a police officer in 1996 and was convicted of misdemeanors of battery and disorderly conduct in uh, 2000. So, of course, he's not worth justice, right? All right. It was the only felony jury trial that D.A. Uh, Michael McCann ever lost in his 38 years as a prosecutor. Okay? At that time, his ass had lost because he, um, <laughs> this dude, remember he lost. He's like, you think he was sad? Huh? Shortly after 11 p.m. on April 14, 2006, after deliberating for 27 hours, the jury returned his verdict acquitting Springler, Mazarek, John Bartlett, and acquitted of second-degree reckless endangering safety, but the jury was deadlocked on a charge of substantial battery. It was, the, again, the only felony jury trial that E. Mike McCann had ever lost. Trust me, he didn't try very hard, and he was on the p police officer's side, although he was a prosecutor. Good old white boys network. The acquittal. Oh, that's when he quit. I mean, after this, that's when he finally retired. I guess he really retired, I guess. Yeah. I think this is when he retired. Anyway, let me move on. The acquittal drew prompt community outrage, as it should have. Despite the late hour, a small group of protesters led by Alderman McGee marched through the street surrounding the courthouse. There were prompt calls for federal charges. On April 18, 2006, a crowd of 3,000 to 5,000 people marched from Milwaukee County Courthouse to the federal courthouse demanding a federal investigation. I said, uh-uh, because you're not going to just do this shit. If you could just see the picture of this guy, Frank Jude. But now that it's on court TV, just like the Downward case, don't take my word for it. Y'all can go back and look at it. On May 15, 2006, the motorcade of more than 300 cars delivered a petition to United States Attorney Stephen Biskubic demanding a federal investigation. Demanding that we couldn't deal with the state's, uh, you know, recommendation or the state's decision. In response to these demonstrators, Biskubic promised a full investigation because he couldn't believe all of us came up, rolled down like that. He couldn't believe it. This is what happens when community really is like, uh-uh, we ain't tore nothing up yet. We ain't tore nothing up. We trying to get some justice. This is what we try to do. Okay? So, <clears throat> on October 19, 2006, the grand jury returned a two-count indictment charging John Bartlett, Andrew Spangler, Daniel Mazarek, Ryan Lemke, Ryan Packard, each would violate the civil rights of Frank Jude and Lavelle Harris under the color of state law and assaulting Frank Jude while acting as police officers. Three other officers, Stromy, Clausy, and Joseph Schabel, all agreed to plead guilty crimes 
related to the beating. Now, this is the federal trial now. So, look, on July 5th, 2007, Ryan Lemke agreed to plead guilty to a lesser crime. And on July 9th, 2007, the jury trial commenced against the four officers. Huh, but unlike the state trial, the federal trial included one black man on the jury. Additionally, Charles Cleveland Jr., the only black judge serving on the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Wisconsin, presided over the trial. The most plausible change in testimony from Joseph Shabel, the first one on duty to arrive at the scene, who testified in the state court that he never kicked Frank Jude, but did observe others do it, he had to tell the truth. So in federal court, after pleading guilty pursuant to a plea agreement that included a grant of immunity for perjury charges for his state testimony, a Joseph Stable testified that he stomped on Frank Jew's head two or three times on the concrete. You hear that? After nearly three weeks of testimony and roughly 30 hours of deliberation, shortly after 2 p.m. on July 26, 2007, the jury of eight women and four men returned his verdict, finding John Bartlett, Daniel Mazarek, Andrew Springer guilty of both counts. The jury acquitted Ryan Packer of both counts. Packer's defense was that he acted as a reasonable police officer when he took Frank Jew to the ground and left the scene in search of Lavelle Harris before the others began to beat Jew. Remember, he went running looking for the other dude. But he came back. Anyway, the jury rejected Mazarek's defense, which was that eyewitnesses were confusing him with Ryan Lemke, another off-duty officer at the party, who pleaded guilty pursuant to a plea agreement shortly before the federal trial began. At the time, both defendants had roughly the same bill, same hair color, and style glasses. Further supporting Daniel Mazzari's defense of mistaken identification is the fact that some witnesses did not identify Mazzari as a person involved in the Frank Jew beating until after the photographs of Daniel Mazzari, Andrew Springler, and John Bartlett and Ryan Packer were widely publicized in the media. So at that time, Ryan Lemke's photograph was not publicized. Yeah. Um, Daniel Mazzari, Daniel, Daniel Springler, and both both of whom had been free on bond were promptly taken into custody to await sentencing. John Bartlett was already in state custody having been convicted and sentenced to four and a half years in prison for making bomb threats to his former police station during a night of drinking on December 5th, 2005. He was, while he was suspended from the police force during an investigation into this matter. Also, while this matter was pending, John Bartlett was charged in federal court with falsely stating that he was not currently facing felony charges in an eff effort to obtain a machine gun a handgun, and hundreds of rounds of ammunition. Okay, this is what, so this, this is what this guy did after um, he was, a, a, you know, sentenced and convicted. On March 30th, 2007, Bartlett pleaded guilty to his charge, and on August 3rd, 2007, Chief Judge Rudolph Rand, the sentence Bartlett to 18 months in prison to be followed by three years of supervised release. That's all. 
John Bartlett was sentenced to a total of 208 months in federal a prison to be served consecutively to his other sentences. In a letter read by his attorney, Frank Jude called Bartlett a disgrace and a terrorist and referred to him as Mr. Punisher. A reference to Bartlett's tattoo and the logo of the vigilante comic book character, The Punisher. They were gang members. They were uh, in the Punisher gang unit. They were the gang members in the police department. Because, you know, you got them in California. You got them on these. These are police gangs. The Punisher. They got a few of them. Anyway, Bartlett read a prepared statement where he apologized to Frank Jude and Lavelle Harris, asked for their forgiveness. We so sick of y'all asking for forgiveness, talking about you sorry, and bitch, you, you know, you, you should have never did that in the first place. You ain't sorry. That's your heart on display. He discussed how incarceration had changed him allowing him to recognize his prior problems and bring him and his family closer to God. Yeah, right. Daniel Masaryk was sentenced to 188 months in prison for his actions. The precise sentence the government argued for. Although he had no criminal record, Judge Cleaver felt this sentence, which was the top of the range suggested by the sentencing guidelines was warranted because of what he regarded as Mazarek's repeated untruthful testimony that he never approached Jude, Frank Jude during the incident. In addition to factors regarding the impact that this crime had upon the community. So, in a brief prepared statement, Mazarek apologized to Frank Jude, LaBelle Harris, for what happened to them, but did not... Let me repeat, did not admit his involvement in the crime. Andrew Sprangler received the same sentence as Mazarek, 188 months. Springer, Springer, like Mazarek, apologized, but did not admit to involvement in the assault. Springer was the most emotional of the three defendants, repeatedly having to stop while speaking because they are punk. Uh, in court to blot his eyes and choke back tears. Splinter had previously noticeably broken down in tears during his attorney closing arguments during the state court trial. Each defendant will also be required to complete three years of supervised release following his release from prison and pay, along with other police officers convicted in the case, more than $16,000 in restitution for Frank Jew's medical bills. Bartlett, Mazarek, and Springer all indicated that they would appeal that decision. They're going to appeal On November 3rd, 2006, Judge Shabel, Joseph Shabel, I'm sorry, pleaded guilty to assaulting Frank Jude under the color of state law, thereby violating Frank Jude's right to be free from the reasonable seizure. Uh -huh. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up because I get angrier and angrier when I <clears throat> see how you know they were allowed to do this. But I encourage each and every one of y'all who enjoyed the um, it might not be as um, murdersome if that's what you like, but if you really want to see how systemic racism.
how white supremacy works in full fledged with ninety eight percent of the cases that come through the judicial system, then please go to court TV and you know see how they handle Frank Jew. Because the last thing I want to say about this is one of the officers was so crazy. Well, they moved his bomb case because, remember, he threatened to bomb. This is why he was out on probation. He threatened to blow up the police station, buy all these rounds of ammunition, you know. But this officer, Lemke, I, I remember him. And, and he bothered me, too, because I remember he only got one year. And that's all he could get under the maximum plea deal. I, you know, it was messed up. Uh, Jew was beaten after going to an off-duty police party with Lavelle Harris and two women in October 24. Took them almost five years to start dealing with this case. The officers assess Jew, accused Jew of stealing the badge. Mel Johnson said Lemke, who admitted to kicking Jew twice in the leg, was part of a methodical beating. He was a police officer who had sworn to protect citizens and uphold the law, and he did neither. Lemke apologizes to the Jude and Harris family, who was cut by the officers at, and their families. I'm, I hope they understand that I'm sorry, Lemke said, adding that he should have been more deliberate and asked more questions before joining in the fracas. Coming from the family of officers, he said, I will miss helping people. He has appealed his firing to the state court. No, you're going to miss coming down to the hood and beating up black people, or you're going to miss your uh, appeal. I mean, you're going to miss your um, paycheck. You're going to miss your uh, overtime and the money you make by riding up and down marginalized community and doing this type of shit. Tell me, today is not about me or my family. It's about Frank Jude and Mr. Harris and this community healing. A statement from Jude, who is in prison. They put him in jail, remember? Because he had, because 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 he had an open battery case or whatever he had. He was no, he was in prison because he had a pro probation violation for having contact with the police. He went to a party. See how they do? He went to a party. <laughs> no matter um, that they were off duty policemen and beating his ass, the ones that showed up in uniform means he had contact. Wow. <laughs> Frank Juice said, Lemke acted no differently than a thug on the street. George Jew Porter, Jew's aunt, blasted Lemke for being part of the police silence wall as well. I mean, Terry McGuinan, a longtime assistant attorney in Milwaukee, who became Lemke's stepfather 10 months ago, encountered that Lemke was forthcoming. He made a bad decision that night, but it doesn't make him a rogue or a bad cop. What they did to Frank Jude, y'all, I'm y'all got to hear the trial, and all I can say is I'm gonna leave it at that. Milwaukee MPD and the treatment of Frank Jude. All right, if you like what you hear, like, subscribe, and share, because I think this is long enough now. All right, we'll see you in the next video.